All right, so in this video, I am going to talk about musical intervals. Now, musical intervals are a very useful tool for conveying emotion in your music. Each interval has a different emotion tied to it. And if you use this well with harmony chords and uh, maybe drones, other musical strategies that I'll talk about in different videos, then this can be a very powerful tool for getting your emotions crossed through your music. It's also very helpful even in and of itself without all the other aspects, just as a tool for getting out of writer's block. So say you're working on a piece, whether it's for film, you're writing something for fun, or maybe you're even doing a theme for a D&D character that you designed, and you know what emotion you want to convey, but you just can't seem to get any momentum moving with your piece. You can't get started or you're stuck on a piece. Selecting an interval to help represent that emotion and playing around with it can be very helpful for getting some momentum started to get your piece moving and to start making some progress. So in this video, I'm going to talk about each of these significant intervals that you're probably going to come across while writing music. I'm going to talk about how they're made. I'm going to give some examples of songs that use them so that you can remember them. And I'm going to talk about what emotions they evoke in me. And I say in me because the emotions they evoke are going to be a little different from verse to person. And you might agree with the emotions I bring up, but if not, I really encourage you to take notes and write down how you think every interval makes you feel. So, starting off, the basic building blocks of every interval is the half step and the whole step. So the half step is on a keyboard, just moving up to the very next whether it's a black key or a white key, anywhere on the keyboard, the very next one is a half step. And this is the smallest interval you can do in Western music. Now, if you move up one more, so two half steps, that's a whole step. So just whole step equals two half steps. And these two ideas are gonna be the basic building blocks for every interval we talk about. So the very first one, the half step, is also known as a minor second. You can lead into it. You can might have a uh, drone underneath it, some instruments playing a long held up note, and then you start your melody on it. Now you'll notice when played together, it has a very clashing, very dissonant sound. They don't go well together. And that can be used to great effect in signaling like an evil or something dangerous or some mysterious foreboding force coming. And you might recognize this as pretty much the primary interval of the Jaws theme. So that's the minor second. If you move up one half step, so now we have two half steps, one whole step, you have the major second. Now this has a very different feel to it. This is a lot more floaty. It's very neutral. And it's used primarily as like a passing interval. So not many melodies are built around the major second. I mean, you can if you'd like, but typically it's just used as a mean to split up another interval. Say I'm on the C and I want to get to E in my melody, and I don't want to jump to the E. I want to kind of float my way up there. Then you would just add the major second in between, and there you go. And you can do that with any interval. And that's the major second for you. This one, you probably would recognize from Happy Birthday. It's the very first interval. It's just that one part. That's the major second. So the 
moving up one more. So now we have three half steps and one and a half full steps. We are now at the minor third. This is a very emotionally charged, sad sounding interval. This interval makes the root of every minor chord. It's used to great effect in sad, emotional music, and it's very, very common. You might recognize it from the song Green Sleeves, or What Child Is This? The Christmas Carol. And it's that very first interval. Now, if you move up one more half step, so now we're at four half steps, which is two whole steps, you now have the major third, which is much happier, much more upbeat, and actually, coincidentally, is the basis of all major chords. Now, the major third, like I said, is a very, very upbeat very happy. It's a little like a, a lot more optimistic sound to it. And this one you might recognize from Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter. And it's that second interval. So if you move up another half step, we're now at five half steps, or two and a half whole steps. Now this is the perfect fourth. It's got a very triumphant, very victorious sounding, but it's also got an ambiguous feel to it. So I feel like if you leap up, it sounds much more, it sounds very triumphant. However, if you have the drum, It's got a much more ambiguous, like it could go in any direction. And uh, this one is used in a lot of different contexts. And it's, you might recognize it from Here Comes the Ride. And it's that very first one. And that's the perfect fourth. Now if you go up one more half step, so now we have six half steps and three whole steps. We get to what is called the tritone, which has a very, very dissonant, very nails on a chalkboard kind of sound to it. For a long time, this has been avoided. In lots of classical theory, it says you avoid it at all costs. You even avoid intervals that are in between and lead to it. You want to avoid it at all costs, but it still has lots of good uses. It has a very, very kind of a magical, very tense, almost otherworldly feel to it. Uh, ironically, even though this doesn't fit the emotions, you can find this interval in The Simpsons. And it's actually not in between. It's it's got the major third in between it. It's there. And that might be one way to remember it. If you go up another half step, so now we have seven half steps or three and a half whole steps, we have the perfect fifth which is a very cheerful, very stable, very uh, majestic kind of sound to it. Now, this one, let's see. So if you play this, you start with it. It's 
It's got a very, like I said, stable, powerful, majestic sound to it. This one you might recognize from Star Wars. And it's that second interval. Now, moving up another half step, we get to the minor sixth. So this is eight half steps, eight whole steps. This one is a very fun one. It's a very emotional interval, in my opinion. One of the most emotional. It's very sad. It's like gut-wrenchingly emotional. And it works even if you start with the drone enter right on it. You might recognize this one from Star Wars again, and this is the love theme. And it's that very first interval. All right, so moving up another half step, we now get to the major sixth, which is nine half steps or four and a half whole steps. This is a similar sound to it, but it's a lot more romantic. It's a lot sweeter sounding, especially if you start with the drone. It's, uh, like I said, similar, a little more romantic, a little more cheerful. And you might recognize this from the NBC chimes. It's that very first one. All right, so moving up another half step. You now get to 10 half steps, five whole, and this brings us to the minor seventh. Now this one is very hard to define. It's very ambiguous. And if you play it with a drone and start a melody on it, it has almost like a longing to it, a mourning to it. And unfortunately, I do not have a song example for this one. But if you do have one, go ahead and write it in the comments. I'd love to see uh, what you come up with. Now, uh, major seventh is the next one. So again, of course, move up a half step. And that brings us to 11 half steps or five and a half whole steps. This is a very dramatic sounding interval. So this brings us to. Now this one is also should be noted if you drop the top one. So we've got C and B here. If you drop that B an octave, it's the minor second. So again, lots of tension in this one. Now this one, can be used, unlike the danger and foreboding, has a bit more positive sound to it, and has feelings of longing, feelings of aspiration, and even sometimes strength or nostalgia to it. So if you've got that drone going, it's got that, like I said, Kind of a longing to it. All right, so moving up to the very last one, we have now moved up 12 half steps, which is six whole steps, and we are now at the full octave. We're playing the same note one octave higher. This is a very clean, very powerful interval used a lot to convey stability, kind of uh, strength to it. And uh, again, unfortunately, I don't have an example for this one. But those are each of the intervals. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I wanted to, like I said, make this video because these intervals can be powerful tools for evoking emotion. It's uh, very useful for getting started. Like I said, if you know that you've got to have a triumphant, victorious uh, theme and you don't know where to start, a nice perfect fifth interval is a great place to start playing around with. Just start jumping around. 
try different rhythms. Different things. You can play around with it, and it's a nice tool for overcoming uh, writer's block. So thanks for watching the video. There are detailed notes on each of the intervals we discussed in the description of this video, just in case you'd like to copy and paste them for future reference. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If there's anything else you'd like to see in future videos, let me know in the comments. But for now, have a great day and keep on writing.